Okay, I'm live. If there's anyone in the chat, the first thing I would like to ask is for you guys to let me know if you can hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me, please let me know so that I can adjust the volume on the chat. Other than that, I am just super excited to be here. Um, I took a challenge. Um, I don't see the person in the chat, so unless the person is on the chat or writes to me, um, I'm not going to disclose the name, but the person um, wanted to see me uh, cook live. So I've been putting it off for a while and trying to figure out the different ways that I can do this live. So here we are. Um, and I'm going to, if I get enough people uh, giving, uh, requesting it, I should say, I will definitely make you guys um, my famous arroz con gandules. Hello, Paul. Thank you so much for being here. And since you're in the chat, I would like to know if you could see the uh, stove on your screen. So please let me know. Otherwise, I would have to adjust it so that you can. I do have to go grab a pot real quick before getting started. I thought I had everything ready, but since this was an impromptu live cooking video, um, I delayed a little bit and I forgot my pot. But Paul, please let me know if you can see at least the left side of the burners on the stove. In the meantime, while we wait for you, I'm going to go grab the pot real quick because I have to... Um, get started and hopefully we can get this rice done in a timely manner in under hopefully 30 minutes. We'll see. Let me see. You can see it. Hello, MK. Wonderful. So you can see at least the left, the left side. Maybe I'll shift it a little bit because I had planned on using the right side of the burner. So let me see. Uh, eh. We'll just keep it on the left side just for the sake of time. I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab my pot very quickly. And since you guys are already here, I'm going to get started. Like I said, I was challenged to do a live cooking video and here I am doing something that is very difficult for me. Those of you that know me know that I am super, super camera shy. And when it comes to cooking, I get very nervous. So let's go ahead and grab that pot and get started very quickly. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, that wasn't too long, I hope. Um, one of the reasons why I did forget the pot is because typically when we make this rice, we use this rice cooker. This one was a gift from my mother-in-law many years ago. I've been married almost 33 years. And when we got married, she gifted me that pot. So I'm very grateful to her. And I'm gonna start by heating up the pan. And the reason why I can't use that pot is because these induction stoves uh, require a specific type of pot. Let me get started with just warming up my pan. And I'm gonna put it on high for the time being just so that we can get it warmed up. Now, can you see me uh, well? Can you see the pot clearly? Let me know if you do. Let's see. You can see it. Okay, great, Paul. Hello, Karen. And guys, I don't have moderators, so if I don't answer you right away, put it on caps if you have a questions with regards to the recipe, and that way I can address it right away. So the first thing that's going to go into the pot once it starts to once it starts to warm up, and this stove goes up to 1800. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to max so that we can warm it up a lot quicker. The first thing that's going to go into the pot is the annatto seed oil. And I'm going to add most of it and reserve a little bit for the next stage of the cooking. So I have about three tablespoons of the annatto seed oil. And for those of you that have been asking about the annatto seed oil, um, I have annatto seed oil in different forms and I make it different ways. 
I think I talked about that in another video. Um, one is making it with 100% lard, which is actually the traditional way of making annatto seed oil in Puerto Rico, at least the way my mother makes it. And the other is by using a blend of oil and lard. And of course, you can make it with just oil if you want to. Let's see, this is warming up nicely. And because we're making my famous arroz con gandules, the way mommy makes it is with some ham. And the first thing I like to do is brown the ham. Now, I do not add all the ingredients into the pan like most people do. I actually like to brown the ham separately. Reason being is because I like it, I like it to get crunchy. So, I'm going to brown my ham, and in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit about the other ingredients that we're using for this recipe. Um, by now, most of you know that sazon, adobo, and all-purpose seasoning are my go-to seasonings for a lot of my recipes, but the main ingredient is the sofrito criollo, and I already have a couple of recipes in my channel on how to make the sofrito criollo. So be sure to check that out. Besides the sofrito, we're gonna be using my seasonings. I, I make my own seasonings using some of the herbs and spices from my garden, and it's a little bit lower in sodium and also without any additives. So if any of you guys are interested, you can email me and I'll send you guys a little bit more information about that. Now, while the ham is browning, let's talk a little bit about the type of rice that I'm going to be using. So, for the traditional arroz con gandules, I always use medium grain rice. Um, I use other types of rice, but when it comes to the arroz con gandules or the rice and pigeon peas, my go-to is the medium grain rice. Partly because I like my rice to be very loose, and also because it's the kind of rice that my mother uses. Mommy only uses medium grain rice. If she ever sent us shopping for rice and we came home with anything other than her specific brand or long grain rice, we would have to go back. So that's something that we all knew. Um, I think I mentioned on the last video that Mommy is very particular about the specific brands that she uses. And she had an impact on me when it comes to that, but I'm not that picky. So let's see. The ham smells amazing. And this is just good old cooked ham. You could use Spam in this recipe. Shout out to AP, who it happens to be the king of Spam. Um, you could also use bacon or longaniza, which is a type of sausage that we make in Puerto Rico. Guys, if you have a question, put it in caps so that I can catch it. I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit bigger so I can see it. Let me see. And I'm doing this from my laptop. Hopefully my laptop doesn't die on me before the end of this live. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I can get this a little bit bigger so I can catch some of your comments and cook while I talk. Let's see. Um, there we go. Let's see. Hello, MK. Nopales with scrambled eggs. Nopales is the, um, oh my gosh, I forgot how to call those in Spanish now. Well, help me out because I forgot right now what they're called in Spanish. But I think I know what you're talking about. All right, sorry, uh, sorry you can't see my, my, the top of my head, but to be honest with you, uh, what I'm most interested in is, especially since I'm a mess today, I don't have any makeup on either, uh, is for you to see what's happening right here in the pot. And don't worry, that's just the stove letting me know that I removed the uh, pot from the stove top. So this is the consistency or, or the browning that I'm looking for. And right now, I'm just going to remove the ham because I don't cook the ham together with the rice. 
Yes, that's something that I do a little bit different than other people. So let me go ahead and grab these and set them aside. And I have about four ounces of cooked ham. And as you can see, I diced them small. So next we're going to be making the base, which we often refer to it as the sofrito as well. Even though I just showed you what the sofrito criollo is for me. Um, we also call the mixture that I'm about to make so, sofrito. So basically the meaning of sofrito is stir fried or cooked together. So here we go. The, the oil is hot and I reduce the heat because anato seed oil tends to burn and when it burns, it's very bitter. So we don't want that to happen. Next, I'm going to add the sofrito criollo. And most sofrito criollos are basically cilantro, bell peppers or cubanel peppers, ajicitos, which are sweet uh, peppers, uh, also referred to as cachuchas. We raise the heat. Now I definitely want a little bit of heat on that. Um, we also use onions and garlic. And of course, my favorite, los dos primitos, cilantro and culantro, also referred to as recaito. Just depends on what part of Puerto Rico you're from. And now what I'm gonna do is just saute on high the sofrito. And once this starts to come to temperature or to a boil and some of the water from the sofrito uh, starts to evaporate, I'm going to continue building the sofrito. Let me show you very quickly what my sofrito looks like. I make mine from scratch and some of the herbs come from my garden. And I'll encourage you guys to check it out. I have a video where I detailed the uh, recipe and the process for the sofrito criollo and two ingredients that I added that are not that common in some sofrito criollos. But this is what it looks like. Smells incredible, nice and fresh, but honestly, when I make the sofrito, because it, because it entails you know, quite a bit of labor, um, not labor, but um, I usually make a lot of it and freeze it. And I just put them in zip bags and freeze them. Freeze them sometimes. You can dehydrate it too. I'm not a fan of dehydrated sofrito for many reasons, but one being that you lose a lot of the flavor in the uh, dehydrating process. But you can make a lot of it and freeze it and you're good to go for many months. It just depends on what you make. So check out those videos and let me know your thoughts. Now this is coming to temperature. And while this is happening, we're going to begin adding the uh, seasoning, starting with the Sazon Criollo. Now today I'm using my homemade spices. I'm also using my All Pro seasoning. And of course the adobo, which is the trinity of and the secret of my cooking. And I make my own, like I said, using homemade, uh, using some of my own natural seasonings. Of course, I added red and real salt to it, but it is a little bit lower in sodium than most. I think uh, some of you guys know that I have a severe heart condition. So I try to make things that I like and enjoy just a little bit healthier anytime I can. Saute this for a couple of minutes. And something that I do different than some people is that I like to saute the rice with the sofrito at the same time. Okay. Another thing that I don't do is I don't add tomato sauce to my sofrito when I make rice. So, and for the adobo, that was two teaspoons of adobo. The all pro seasoning, I added one tablespoon and one teaspoon of the sazon criollo, which you can substitute obviously for the leading brand or my mom's favorite brand of sazon with culantro and achote, and that'd be fine. In this case, my sazon is a little bit, uh, you know, has a little bit less red in it because I don't add any food coloring besides the achote. So let's see, this is coming along and even though it looks a little bit dry, we're gonna take care of that in just a little bit, right? So to this, I'm going to be adding the rice. And if I don't do this, my mom is not going to be happy. So mommy, this one is for you. I always rinse my rice, okay? 
My mom always rinses her rice, so I rinse my rice. And that is two cups of medium green rice. Now I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit because I'm talking and I don't want to burn it. So I'm just going to saute it. And you're probably wondering what happened to the gandules. Well, don't worry, I didn't forget them. Those are going to be coming up soon. Let's see. And check it out. As I saute the rice, it starts to color the rice and it gives it that nice yellow color. Forget that beef. Like I said, this is um, an induction stove. So anytime I lift the pot, it's going to beef on me. Just letting me know. Okay. And now I'm going to just kind of brown the rice a little bit. Not too much because we don't want to brown it. We obviously don't want to burn the rice. But I want to just give it a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a bite to it. And while that's happening, let me talk a little bit about the gandules that I'm going to be using. I'm using a can today. My gandule plants this year failed me. They, they did very poorly. So I don't have any fresh. But this one in particular is pretty good. Again, it's also mommy's favorite brand. So I'll be using those today. All right. Let's keep sauteing this. Give it maybe another 30 seconds or so. And this looks good. And now that I'm getting ready to add the gandules to the rice, I'm going to increase the heat because now I need the temperature to be as high as possible. So in go the gandules. And we're going to saute it. Guys, let me know what you're thinking and if you're enjoying this impromptu live cooking video i don't see my challenger on the chat so i will not disclose his name yet let's see right now karen i'm using medium high okay but in just a few seconds i'm going to raise it to high because i'll be adding the water to the rice and that's important because we don't want the rice to cool down too much and that's what's going to ensure that my rice is nice and loose um, i know that some people don't mind mushy rice but i'm not one of those people when i cook rice i like my rice to be loose and i hope that today um, I, it works for me because uh, unfortunately i'm not using the rice cooker that i normally use so i'm hoping that this pot works okay so looks like we're in good shape and I'm raising the temperature, the temperature all the way to high. And I'm adding, at this point, you can add the water. I'm adding some uh, low sodium vegetable broth because I had some left over and I wanted to use it all up. And to the rice, I just added, to the two cups of rice, I just added two cups of the broth. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Um, some people add, I think it's, anywhere between one and a quarter cups to one and a half cups of water uh, per cup of rice. I don't do that either. So I think that equal parts of rice in water or liquid is perfect for as long as you monitor what's happening in the pot. Okay, so now we're gonna let this come to a boil. And while this comes to a boil, let me see, do we have any questions? The last thing I added, Karen, um, is it Karen? MK, I just added some vegetable broth. Normally it's made with water, but I added vegetable broth because I, I had some leftover and I wanted to use it up. But normally you could use water and you're gonna get the same results. Hello, Rakamas, so nice to see you. So nice to see you. So yes, I am making pigeon peas. So if you were asking me, MK, about the uh, pigeon peas, this is the pigeon piece that I use. This happens to be mommy's uh, favorite brand. So I know right now she's watching, she's proud. Uh, my mother doesn't change it. She, she's not big on switching products and brands. She's very particular about what she uses. So she'd be very proud right now. See, I hope you guys can see that, but it's boiling very rapidly. And this part right here, 
this next part is something that took me a very long time to master. And when I say master, it was because my mom, my mother doesn't touch the pot uh, at all throughout this whole point. And you're going to see in just a few minutes, one of the reasons why it used to drive me insane and it took me a while to master this because it made me nervous because the whole time I'm cooking this rice, it's on high heat, I'm not touching it. And what we're looking for is to, uh, for all the water to evaporate. In this case, uh, according to mommy, we are draining all the water basically. At, at this point, she just doesn't even, you know, leave any water. And you'll see, I'll, I'll do my best to show you guys what it looks like. But once it starts to bubble, the bubbles will begin, you know, it'll start with big bubbles and gradually the bubbles will become smaller and smaller. Um, if it makes you nervous to leave it untouched, you could, if you want to, you know, drag the rice and make sure it's coated with the water or even, you know, if you want to, right? Um, mix it a little bit. Um, but I don't think it's going to matter once you see what I'm going to do, okay? Uh, my mother really is a master in the kitchen, even though she doesn't give herself much credit. And um, she taught me to be patient when it comes to the rice. And this is me being patient, but keeping an eye on this pot, okay? Especially because I'm not using the uh, normal rice pot to make this rice. You see, there's a very big difference between this pot right here and the one that we normally use. So let's see. Hopefully, it works. If it doesn't work, we're still going to eat it, I promise you. The big jar containers right here. Well, we have some kimchi. I have that video that I already recorded. I'm a little slow when it comes to editing because it's just me. And I do that, you know, at nighttime when everybody's sleeping and I'm having a hard time sleeping. This one right here is a mandarin and hibiscus ginger soda. And uh, I use ginger butt to make it. This one is sauerkraut. Um, I also have a ginger pineapple bug going that I use to make this beauty right here, which is my wheat, my whole wheat um, sourdough, which I'll be making tomorrow. And then the last one is a ginger infused for water that I also use to make some of my sourdough starters. Um, I'm not really sure um, how I would share that video with you guys because baking videos are a little bit tricky for me. Okay, before I burn the rice, I just want to show you guys where we're at. And it's almost dry at this point. And at this point is when we want to bring back the ham. Okay. And remember that little bit of oil that I reserved? I'm going to be adding it back. I'm going to be adding it at this point too because we need that to make that rice nice and shiny and crispy. And the annatto seed oil is what I use for color in this recipe. Okay, I think we're good. Absolutely. Now we're just going to stir the rice and bring all the rice from the bottom up. If I have been using this pot, you would see that when you stir the rice, you're going to be bringing the rice over from the bottom over the top and go around the pot until all the rice is perfectly mixed. In this case, this is pretty wide, so we don't have to do that. Let's see. We still have a little bit of water here, but that's fine. And if you look closely, it's starting to stick on the bottom. We don't want that, okay? And this is mommy right here teaching me how to bring all the rice over to the center of the pot and away from the sides of the pan. That is one of those little secrets that I picked up from her as well. And I don't think she'll be very proud of me right now because I should have waited maybe another minute or so on high for the rest of the water to evaporate. But in any event, we're just going to let it go, bring all the rice over to the center. 
making sure that we are bringing everything from the bottom up. Okay, it smells incredible, you guys. Wish you guys were here to taste this rice. Now I'm going to be reducing the heat to low. And this is my secret, guys. When I make rice, all we need is exactly 20 minutes. So if you guys stay with me for the next 20 minutes, I can show you guys what this is going to look like at the end of the process. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, I can certainly answer them. Let's see. Hello, Gina. You love my kitchen. Thank you so much. This is actually a little recording studio that my husband um, put together for me that is adjacent to the kitchen. He just got tired of hearing me complain about uh, not having enough space. And believe me, sometimes he'll claim that I have too much space. But for me, there's never enough. I, I, don't, I don't think that we have enough space when it comes to the kitchen. I think I, half of the house should be mine. But that's a debate that we constantly have, and he complains that, you know, he's running out of places to run to. <laughs> so um, let's recap before, while we wait for the rice, I added a quarter cup of annatto seed oil. If you don't have the annatto seed oil, you can use any type of neutral oil you have available, and that's fine. I added uh, two cups of medium green rice. Um, let's see. For the sofrito criollo, my basic recipe uh, for this particular amount of rice that I'm making is one, between three tablespoons to one quarter of a cup of the sofrito criollo, one teaspoon of adobo, and I use my homemade adobo that I make use, you know, with just fresh ingredients from my garden, and also, and whatever I can get from my garden is all organic. I also use one tablespoon of the all-pro seasoning. Um, this is an all-purpose seasoning. And one teaspoon of sazon criollo, which is the equivalent to one of these envelopes. So that's basically the recipe. And for the liquid, I added equal parts of rice and water. And in this case, I used vegetable oil. So I added two, two cups, I'm sorry, of the liquid. I don't add any salt because the sazon criollo, the adobo, and the all pro seasoning each have some of that rem and real salt that, I'm, that I use in just about all the recipes. Now, while this is happening, I'm going to cut some fresh cilantro. And if you guys have been watching me for a while now, you know that los dos primitos are my favorite herbs. I don't have any culantro or recao because unfortunately my plants died with this wicked cold weather we've been getting here in Florida. I know, I just said it. Florida and cold weather, yes. We've been getting temperatures as low as 38, 39, which is unusual, I believe. Free at last, hello, my friend. Exactly, he loves me enough to want to give me the whole house for as long as I cook for him. He, uh, oops, that's, that was the pot, I'm sorry, guys. Well. He, is, he actually spoils me. You know, I don't give him enough credit. He spoils me. I'm going to go ahead and chop off some of my fresh cilantro. This I do have a little bit in the garden still. And it's still, you know, having a little bit of a hard time with the cold weather. But I'm lucky because cilantro happens to like cold weather, believe it or not. The, the cilantro, on the other hand, didn't do so well. So let me go ahead while we wait for that. Chop up some of this mm, aromatic fresh cilantro that is going to be added to the pot right at the end. And hopefully I didn't forget anything that I was talking about. I think I have everything in the pot that I need. And I'm very picky when it comes to what I add to my pot. Um, it's really, to me, a matter of what it looks like. It has to look pretty. I actually believe that if, if it looks pretty, people will eat it you'll be more than likely to at least try it. So whenever I chop herbs, I try to keep them uniform. And my boys don't like big pieces of anything. So I always make sure they're tiny so they don't pick it out. So I wish I had some cilantro, but I don't. So I added a little bit more cilantro this time. And let's see, who is here? 
I wish we had smell o vision too. I really do because right now it's smelling really awesome in my kitchen. And that reminds me I should lower the heat just in case because it is the first time I cook rice in this uh, using this stove. Of course, I'm not even using the uh, pot that I normally use for my rice, so I'm a little nervous about it. But let's see. I know that at the end of the day, I better come up with something. My husband is patiently waiting for dinner, so I definitely have to have something on the table for him. Now, this rice is going to be served today with some pork chops. I'm not really sure how I'm going to make them yet, but I know he's getting pork chops. <laughs> Let's see. Karen Rollin. Is anybody in the chat new to my channel or have you guys been following me for a while? Let me know. And I also want to know if you guys want to see me do this more often. I don't see my friend that challenged me to have a uh, to do a video cooking live on the chat. So until he shows up, I won't disclose his name. But uh, anyway i am glad he did because i'm enjoying this it's actually the very first time i cook live so i really 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 can't wait to see how this goes and i'm going to estimate that we have maybe about 15 minutes left on the rice now this that step in particular is very important um you don't want to take the cover off you want to continue cooking the rice cover for exactly 20 minutes and i promise that if you like your rice to be loose and the grains to be loose, I promise you that if you follow this recipe step by step, and once you reduce the heat to low, um, which by the way, I don't know if I, if I mentioned that, I, I reduce the heat to low. If you cook the rice cover for exactly 20 minutes, doesn't matter whether you're making two cups, four cups, or even five cups of rice, Nine times out of 10, your rice will be perfectly loose and cooked. Now, at the end of that 20 minutes, I usually just come back and add the cilantro and the culantro if I'm adding that, and stir the rice, cover it, and then I leave it covered for another five minutes. Uh, if you want, you can turn it off because like I said, it will be cooked. It will be perfectly cooked at the end of 20 minutes if you're looking for a loose grain cooked rice that is um, i'm not a fan of mushy rice in any form um, i'm not a fan of uh, soups that have rice for that very reason because i don't like mushy rice at all so at the end of that 20 minutes the rice will be perfect now besides the cilantro i always like to add a little bit of color to my food and i'm going to be adding some of my homemade roasted bell peppers um, these came out pretty good, but to be honest with you, I'm a little disappointed because, I don't know, I guess I did not remove the skins from them, which is one of the things that I do to keep them whole. And I don't know, the peppers were not that sweet, so I'm not very happy with them. So I have about this much. You don't have to add them. You know, you don't have to add it if you don't want it. You could also add uh, stuff, olives to it if you want. I'm not going to because one of my babies don't enjoy olives at all. Let's see. MK, this is the first time on my live. Well, I haven't done many because for, I can't seem to get people to join my lives. I've done them before and tried doing lives, but uh, since my channel is fairly small, I'm, I can't seem to get enough people to join. But you know, I'm very excited that you guys are here, and if you're enjoying these videos and you want to see more, just, you know, what I ask from you guys uh, is that you give me a thumbs up and that you comment on my videos, because unfortunately, even though my channel is fairly small, and um, it's, I, I think I have about 12,000, a little bit over 12,000 subscribers, uh, I'm shadow banned, believe it or not. And that's been a very big problem for a lot of us lately. So, you know, we depend on your thumbs up and your comments. And that's usually the way that YouTube knows that you enjoy the content and that you want to see more, which I sound like a broken record because if you've seen my videos, you've heard me say this before. Um, your thumbs up and your comments is actually what helps us force YouTube to 
take our videos and show it to more people. But if I don't get thumbs up and comments, basically after the first 12 to 24 hours, my video, my videos are dead in the water. Um, and you can go back to um, some of the most recent videos I've done and you'll see, I can't even break a hundred views on my videos. I still do them. I love sharing my recipes. Um, I do this mostly because Unfortunately, I won't be able to do this professionally like I had hoped, but um, one day I am hopeful that my grandkids or even my kids will be able to go back and look at my videos and say, hey, that's my mom. And that for me is more than enough, to be honest with you. So I do uh, enjoy, you know, all these kinds of uh, videos, but I don't get a lot of interaction from a lot of my viewers. Like I said, I have over 12,000 and I can't even break 100 views in most of my videos. It takes a long time. Um, in fact, the uh, videos that are keeping me going right now happen to be some of my older videos that I've done uh, maybe four and a half, five years ago. So a lot of my newer videos are not, um, I guess, people are not enjoying the content. But that's not going to stop me from doing it, like I said, because I really do enjoy you know, sharing my recipes and my passion with you guys. And again, I'm just blessed to have you all and I have to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being here. I'm actually surprised that I have this many people on my lives, on my life, because normally I can't even get that many. So thank you so much for all of you that are still here with me and patiently waiting for this rice to be ready. Um, in the meantime, if you guys want, we can talk a little bit about what I've been doing with the sourdough starters. Now, I, I know that there is a gazillion videos out there on how to make sourdough starters, but I'm a big proponent of being original. And I have been making this for a very long time, the traditional way, but lately I've been experimenting with fermentation starters or some people call them cultures. Uh, they're actually cultures. And I've been using some of the uh, waters, like the Cafeo water that I have right here, to get my uh, sourdough starters going. And I'm actually very excited to report that this one right here is going to turn to bread by tomorrow morning after church. Um, and look at it. I think hopefully you can see it. It's pretty active and it's ready to become bread. And I made this one using some of that Cafeo water which I'm excited to see what the bread is going to turn out. We don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, besides that, I've been working with the garden, trying to figure out ways to add more herbs to my garden. Um, if you notice, I'm a little bit short of breath because I've been talking a lot. And that's a challenge. For me. That's a bit of a challenge for me. I have severe congestive heart failure, so I have to pace myself. Um, I do have a lot of videos coming up once I get them edited. Right now I'm working on the Valencia cake recipe that I promised. And that video I recorded a while ago. It's just that, you know, it's very hard for me to record the videos and edit them because I'm a one-man show or a one-woman show. I basically do it all. So it's kind of difficult to get it all done. And like I said, I edit my videos on nighttime when everybody's sleeping. So... Um, you know, bear with me. Those videos are coming. I'm, I have the video of the kimchi coming up. I do my kimchi different than other people. I also have my sauerkraut video coming up. And I'm working on testing different recipes and ways that you can make sourdough starters with just about anything. And I think this is something that I had talked about a while ago, but... Um, I just haven't been able to record the actual video. Um, baking videos are super difficult for one person, uh, mostly because baking videos are time sensitive, uh, especially when it comes to bread or cakes. Uh, and it's difficult to maneuver the camera so that you can get the better angle without compromising the information in the process. And if I'm not going to be able to show you the actual process, then I don't feel comfortable with, you know, sharing the video because my object at the end of the day is so that you take my recipe and you try it at home. 
And when I give you a recipe, for those of you that have asked me, I give you the recipe exactly the same way I make it. Um, if you notice in most of my videos, I have everything pre-measured. And that's because I've taken the time to measure each ingredient. Uh, mommy taught us to cook with just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Mommy did not have any recipes. So there, for me, um, it was fun because it forced me to be creative. But when I started YouTube, um, my biggest challenge was with people asking me amounts and how much of this, how much of that. So that prompted me to, you know, start measuring the ingredients. Because for the most part, when I'm cooking and I'm not doing a video um, and, I, and I'm making something new, I basically just wing it like most of us do. Let's see who else we have here. Hello, Teresa. Oh, my God. Free at last. I love kimchi, and my husband is starting to get the hang of it. Uh, I made a ton of it, and I think I, I ate most of it. Let's see. Thank you so much, Karen. That means a lot to me, honestly. It does. Thank you. Thank you, Free at last. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. MK, that means the world to me. Um, I don't like... I think I've said this a million times. I'm a very shy person, believe it or not. I talk a lot, but I'm very, very shy. And I am very camera shy, to be honest with you. This is very hard for me. This is me being outside of my element big time. But um, I don't know. I'm teaching my boys to, to go after their dreams and to do whatever it takes to be happy. And cooking makes me very happy. Um, when I'm in the kitchen, and I wish my husband wasn't more camera shy than me, you could ask him. I am praying that one of these days he'll pop his head and come on one of my videos, but we'll see. We'll leave it up to him. I don't want to force him. We've been married almost 33 years, so eventually someday he will, I hope. But um, he tells me all the time, you know, when you're in the kitchen, it's like you're in a different zone. You're a different person. He says, you smile more. So I'm glad you guys are seeing that and it's projecting um, this live. I haven't been coming out a lot on the other videos because, see, for me, I don't want, I, I, it's not so much about you guys seeing me, but seeing what's happening in the pot so that you can follow along and maybe make the recipes for your families. I spend a lot of time researching, especially for those dishes that we don't, typically eat or we didn't grow up eating, I spend a lot of time doing research so that when I deliver that recipe to you, not only have I tested it several times, but I know you're going to be able to make it at home. I'm going to peek, even though it hasn't been 20 minutes, I'm going to peek because this is the first time I use this pot to make rice. And I want to make sure that my rice is not burning. But just remember that I said before, that it's important that you don't lift the top, that you continue cooking it for the full 20 minutes without opening the lid. But I am going to peek just in case and just, well, it's, it's looking pretty good and cover it right back because I want all that steam to remain trapped in the pot. We have about probably another 10 minutes before and I'm hoping that at the end of those 10 minutes, the rice is done. And Fingers crossed, okay? If not, uh, since I'm not using a rice pot or the typical rice pot that I showed before, which is this one, um, maybe it'll take a little bit longer. But just so you know, try it at home. Actually, if you don't have one of those pots, you can use maybe a Dutch oven. Um, but I guess this is the perfect example that you don't have to have the same utensils or the same equipment that I have to make my recipe. So hopefully we're able to at least prove that you can use whatever you have at home without investing a ton of money and gadgets like my husband says, uh, like I do. Because I don't know if you can see it behind me, but I have just about every gadget you can imagine. And just a couple of days ago, he was talking about that. And he's like, I hope you're not buying anything else. And every time he sees me on Amazon, he's worried about me ordering some new gadgets. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, good. Good, Karen. Well, hopefully I can edit the kimchi video 
uh, in the next week or so. And just for your information, guys, I'm running between three to four weeks behind. So I record the videos and you don't see the, the videos until probably three to four weeks later. So I'm always recording videos, but by the time you see it, it's usually between three to four weeks later. Let's see. Hello, Gina. It is my pleasure, Gina. Um, I hope that you guys try this recipe at home. Um, if you guys would like me to see, um, maybe share with you guys, especially because one of the things I notice is that because I'm used to always having the sofrito on hand, I assume that everybody does. But uh, I guess this is uh, the perfect time to talk about it. One of the things that um, I think is important to note is that when we make the sofrito criollo, which is the base to most of our recipes, you really just need, I, I think it's four or five ingredients. So you need your basic onion, garlic, peppers, and that could be bell peppers, it could be cubanel peppers, any type of sweet pepper will do. The ajicitos in this recipe or the cachuchas actually add a nice flavor to the sofrito, but if you don't have it, that's fine. You can make your sofrito without the cachuchas or the ajicitos. And the other ingredient, um, of course, in my case, is the cilantro and the culantro, which I refer to as the los dos primitos. Those are your basic sofrito recipe. Now mine has also the oreganos, which I have three types of oreganos in my garden. One being, and I think I have one right outside my door, and I'm gonna go grab it so you guys can see. I'm gonna clip a piece so you guys can see it, um, but that's just an optional uh, ingredient. But I also have, in my recipe, the oregano fino, which is the small little leaves that is very similar in appearance to the Mexican oregano. I'm gonna go grab a little piece of the oregano brujo. I have talked about it in my videos before, um, but that's optional, like I said. And um, if you just have cilantro, garlic, onion, and peppers, you can make this sofrito base. Now, the oreganos obviously add a different flavor to your sofrito criollo, which is the reason why I always add it. So since we have a couple of minutes on the rice, I'm going to step out that door real quick and grab the oregano brujo so you guys can see it. what it looks like right most of the time especially in the summertime these leaves will be humongous um, I've had I think I've shared some images of what they look like and this oregano especially the uh, tops you can use everything but look let me see see if I can bring one closer to you and they snap very easily mm, my gosh it smells so good but this is what they look like and this one's tiny compared to some of the leaves that I'm, I get sometimes in the summer, especially from my plant in the backyard. That one grows out of control sometimes, so much so that I have to trim it at least once every couple of weeks because I get so much oregano. Let's see. All family recipes. Absolutely, Gina. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I started YouTube. I wanted to be able to preserve some of my family recipes. And uh, I have all boys. I have three boys. Um, and they cook with me, but it's not the same. I remember, you know, growing up in Puerto Rico, the first time I cooked a meal, I was seven years old. Um, but I was always, you know, following my mom around and trying to learn how to cook. And I learned so much from her. She doesn't even know just how much I learned from her. But you know, the traditions to me are important. So I decided that um, after a brief moment with one of my kids that was very emotional to me, um, I decided to start YouTube because he had concerns about who was going to teach him how to cook if I passed away. So to me, that was hard. And when 
he said that to me, it dawned on me that I needed to do something so that we can preserve these traditions and recipes. And that's also another reason why um, for me, it's important that, you know, we spend a lot of time with them and I write a lot of my recipes and I keep a binder um, just to make sure that they were always happy, you know, so that they don't get lost. I don't have daughters, but I'm looking forward to what my grandbabies and my granddaughters. Let's see. To move your, yes, that's a secret from my mom. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard the term before, but that's another reason, you know, one more way to keep that rice from turning into pegao, which is that crunchy rice at the bottom. I love the pegao, but I think that sometimes is a big waste. So I'd rather be able, you know, be able to serve more rice to my family than end up with a bottom of sticky rice, which is delicious, honestly, but to me, it's a big waste. If you don't eat it, it's a big waste. And I have two sons that don't like pegao. My husband, on the other hand, again, doesn't matter what I put in front of him, he'll eat it. Except animal organs. He he just will not even go there. Yes, this one, Gina, is called Oregano Brujo, where I come from. Um, it's also referred to as Cuban Oregano. And you can find it. I've seen it in some Home Depot stores. And I believe in Lowe's too. So if you have a local Home Depot or Lowe's, you can find it there. And if you um, have are in the internet, you can also find it on Etsy. If you go to Etsy.com, uh, I used to sell all my herbs and my seasonings on Etsy, but unfortunately I got out of that because their fees are ridiculous. And I wanted to keep um, my organic seasonings you know, at the right price and with all the fees that they applied, it just wasn't worth it. Uh, especially because when I make my seasonings, I make it from organic products and ingredients that I have in my garden, but I also use the glass jars. And these jars right now, um, the between the jar and the uh, covers, which are also very fancy, and the empty jar with the label and everything, um, out of my pocket, it cost me two fifty. So for me to put out my products out there using these jars, once I get my labels printed and everything, I'm out about two dollars and fifty cents right off the bat, which is a lot of money when you think about it. And like I said, Etsy was just taking a little bit too much of the, you know, the discount that I wanted to offer people. So that's why I stopped. You know. Um, selling my products on Etsy, but on Etsy you can find a lot of stuff. And this is one that I know for sure you can find. You can also find the culantro on Etsy, the seeds and the actual culantro. Um, in fact, I ordered some cilantro and culantro seeds recently to try it out, even though I have a ton, but I just wanted to see if they were good. So we'll see by the end of February how it turns out. Maybe I'll do a video on how I grow my cilantro and culantro. We'll see. If you guys want to see that, let me know and I'll see how I can set up this area and show you how I, I produce my cilantro and culantro. Let's see. No, this one is not the same as Mexican oregano. This one is way bigger. The other one that I'm referring to that is very similar to the Mexican oregano is the one that I've showed many times on my videos, uh, and I refer to it as oregano fino, which is very tiny. Um, if you go back to my videos, uh, you'll see, I believe it is the video for, I think it's the last video I did for sofrito criollo, maybe the small batch of sofrito criollo. I think in that video, I show you both, the oregano brujo, or Cuban oregano and the oregano fino, which is the one that I was saying that is similar to the Mexican oregano. <clears throat> Let's, see. Let's see. Oh, the binder. Who is that? It's Karen Rollins. Well, guys, I'm sorry. I don't have 
any moderator, so obviously I have to uh, read the comments myself and try to answer you guys. And it's good that it's only a few, a few of you here so that I can address all of the comments. But um, Karen, the binder, uh, hopefully I can show you guys later on, but my husband has been in my case about putting everything together all in one place. And I have a little bit of OCD, so <clears throat> when I started organizing the uh, recipes, um, it was just so many because I write my own recipes. So what I started to do was I started dividing it by categories. Now I need to see if I can find a specific folder that I can use that I can that it will make sense if, if that makes sense to you. So right now I'm in the process of putting it together. I've been asked to put a cooking book together. I'm not sure how or when I'll be able to do that. Uh, I am working on it, but I just don't know, you know, the process. And I'm, again, I'm doing it myself. Obviously, I don't have a publisher. Um, if I don't have like a lot of people asking for it, it wouldn't be cost effective for me to pay somebody to do that. But if I do, even if I do one of those spiral binder recipes with the most popular, let me guys, let me know, you guys, if you want me to, and maybe I can start working on putting some of those traditional recipes into a smaller binder. I don't know. You let me know. Let's check in on the rice and cross your fingers, guys. Please cross your fingers. Hopefully, um, I think it's ready. But hopefully all the, the rice cooked through because I really want you guys to see what it looks like. So here we go. Now the little bit of water that's on the cover or the top, I always try not to get any of that water in the pot. But if you want your rice to be a little bit uh, mushier, go ahead and let that water drip right into the pot. That's fine. But, oh my, smells so beautiful and i mean beautiful it's it's just a thing of beauty but i'm going to show you guys what it looks like okay there you go you see it doesn't look like the rice is cooked but trust me it is and i can tell you that it's just by looking at it but i've been cooking for since i was seven and i'm 51 almost 52. so i know it's ready but before i stir the rice i'm going to add the fresh cilantro and the roasted bell pepper and i made my own roasted bell peppers and you can check out that video uh, i can my own roasted peppers as well anything i can do at home and without preservatives i do so again has everything to do with the fact that i have a severe heart condition and i want to be able to be in control of what i eat and what i feed my family so now again we're going to Stir the rice from the bottom up, always from the bottom up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can just spread that cilantro. Look at that beautiful color over the top and then start on one end, bringing the rice from the bottom up over, from the bottom up over, just like so. I know mommy is proud. Okay. And we're going to go around all of it this way. Let me turn the pan so you can see. From the bottom up and over. And this is going to ensure that we move the rice that's on the bottom to the top for the final few cooking seconds. Okay? And even though I'm not using my rice cooker or my rice pot, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So... Let's see. And again, for those of you that were paying attention before or were listening from the start, mommy always taught me to move the rice away from the sides of the pot. And at this point, that's also important because uh, what happens is the rice will stick to the sides and kind of become pegado or that crispy rice so you get less yield for the two cups of rice. I don't know if you guys can see, but that's quite a bit of rice we just made, and this is going to feed six people at least, okay? Or four very hungry people in our case, because I mean, I'm cooking for my husband, myself, and my two boys, because my oldest son doesn't live here. So, 
And Christian, if you're watching, I wish you were here, baby. Christian is going to be 32 years old and has been living on his own for a while. We miss him. And if you're watching, baby, man, papito, I wish you were here. But anyway, this is what the rice looks like. The rice is perfectly cooked. Check it out. What do you think, guys? Shall we try it? Let's see. I'm going to cover it for another minute or so and allow it to warm up slightly while we wrap this up. If you guys have any questions or any anything you would like to ask me, that'd be great. Now is the time. I'm going to turn off the uh, stove, though, because it's kind of noisy, first of all, and because I also know the rice is ready. Now, if your rice turns out, uh, if you taste it at this point and you have a couple of grains that feel uh, al dente, just by leaving it another five minutes should be fine. Or just with the steam from the pot itself, it should be fine. Let's see. Just maybe. Hmm. Thank you, Karen. I'm going to look into that. Um, at, at the end of the uh, live, I'm going to go back to all the comments. And I'm going to be sticking my email so you guys can contact me. It's also in the um, description box below the video if you guys want to reach out to me if you have any questions. Or you can leave it in the comments. Actually, I know I'm not going to be able to pin it up there. So what I'll do is at the end of the live, I'll go back to the comments and pin my email address. And if you guys have any questions and you guys would like me to send you the full recipe um, so that you can have it or maybe print it, let me know and I'll go ahead and send it to you, okay? Uh, or maybe I'll just go back and post it on the community tab, even though most people don't even look in the community tab um, and they don't, you know, they don't visit the community tab. So I, I kind of stop leaving stuff on the community tab because it does take time um, to put those things out there for nobody to look at. So let's see. Let me move this over a little bit. Okay. I just realized I can make this even bigger. My goodness. Of course, as you can see, I have no glasses, so that doesn't help. Give me just a second. Here we go. Let's see. Well, thank you so much, MK. Um, again, like I said, I will leave uh, the email in the comments of the video, right below the video, so that if you guys have any questions or you would like me to email you the recipe or you want the recipe so that you can print it, you can reach me. Well, it's been a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. I think we had a successful live, but before you guys leave, I think uh, it merits for me to taste the uh, rice so you guys can see the consistency. So if you want to see me at least take a little bite of this rice, let me know. Please remember on your way out to leave a comment on the, on the video, go back to the video, leave a comment, share the video, give me a thumbs up, and maybe, just maybe, um, I can get out of YouTube jail and, and then we'll start, you know, sending out some of my videos to more people so that we can continue showing these recipes. So one more second, I'm going to go grab a fork real quick so that we can taste this rice right before we close this live stream. Okay, I think I have one of my, or maybe I don't, okay, how appropriate is that? I'm going to grab this little pestle that my mother-in-law gave me to serve up some of this lovely rice, and maybe I won't be able to decorate it and make it really nice for you, but I'll do my best to remember today when, before we eat dinner, to take a picture of the rice with the pork chops that I'm going to be serving the rice with. But look at that. Look at the consistency of the rice. The um, grains are nice and loose. Let me see. Maybe this is a better angle. But look at that. 
It's nice and loose. It's not mushy. One more thing before you guys go. If you want your rice to stay uh, this way and, and nice and loose, it's always a good idea to remove it from the pot and set it aside so that it doesn't get mushy because if you cover the rice, it's going to create steam and that steam is going to continue cooking the rice and it's also going to draw moisture and make your rice mushy okay but let me get a better angle here this has been great look at that guys and i don't have to tell you it smells amazing I, and i'm getting hungry just thinking about this first bite but guys this one is for all of you and for being here with me and I have to, again, thank you all for being here because, I, I, like I said, it's, it's a pleasure for me to share these recipes with you guys. Let me see if I can get a bite with a little bit of everything in it just to make it count. All righty. Check it out. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Ay, ay, ay. Delicious. But you guys know something? I forgot the main ingredient. Tabasco do over okay i'm gonna put a little dash of tabasco and now it's complete here we go mm. Mm. Ay, meal. delicious i'm looking forward to dinner i'm sorry guys i'm talking with my mouth full how rude right but it is delicious. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I hope you give this recipe a try again. Send me an email and I'll be more than happy to forward the full recipe, the written recipe to all of you guys. And until next time, I'm Evita, Cooks and Preps. Buen provecho y hasta la próxima. You really have to try it. Mm.